I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We had a fellowship again to talk about His Word, and uh, today it's 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 a story. So I'm not going to refer to I'm not going to read to you, but I'm going to refer to Scripture, and that's your homework to go and check out that I was speaking the truth. You're going to have to take my word for it during the during the devotional. But it's it's. Uh, it's from Numbers chapter 22, and you'll, you'll know the story very well. You know, I miss my pets. We had a house that was full of pets, two dogs, two cats, three tortoises, and, and uh, we really loved them. And when my last dog died, um, my children convinced me that pets were a long-term commitment unless they're silkworms, and that I wasn't going to, to have something, have another pet. But we had a golden spaniel, and her name was Amber. And we used to say to her, Amber, sing. And she would throw back her head and go, woo. And she did it so spontaneously. When we lived in Sabi, um, the, there was a fete on in town. And at the, any fetes around there, they used to call on the, on the dog school. The, the military dog school at Burke's Luck used to come and and demonstrate their, their dogs and show, you know, have a bit of a dog show. And after they had finished, they called anybody who had dogs there to come up onto the stage and let their dogs do tricks. And so my kids took Amber up onto the stage and they said to her, Amber, sing. And she, woo! And everybody enjoyed that so much that they won a bag of dog food and came home very proud that their dog had done this thing in public. And, uh, and that dog was amazing. She and I used to have conversations. I would talk to her and she would cock her head and lift her ear and she would almost answer me. And so it should not surprise you when I tell you that one of my favorite passages of scripture is the story of Balaam and his donkey. And it's the only evidence I have in scripture that a donkey spoke to a man. And most people, when they talk about this, they make a bit of a mockery of, of, of Balaam because he had a conversation with his donkey. But you know the story. Israel is on its way to the promised land, going up the, up the east coast of the Jordan Valley. And they, they came to the Amorites and they annihilated them. And as they traveled further north, they camped on the plains of Moab on the east side of the River Jordan, and just across the River Jordan, there was the city of Jericho, uh, which would be the first city that they would go in and conquer during the conquest. And so they were camping there, and Balak, who was the Moabite king, got very really nervous because he had heard what the children of Israel, how they had defeated the Amorites and, and dealt with other problems on their way, and he got very concerned about this. And so he sends for Balaam. Now, we're not too sure about Balaam, what he was. He seemed to be some sort of a diviner. We might want to say he was a witch doctor, although I don't think that's the best term. He, he, may, he may have been a prophet, um, but he was probably not a Jew. He certainly wasn't a Jew from what I can gather, uh, but he believed in God. And so Balak sends a delegation to him and says, Balaam, I will give you all of this money and all of this reward if you curse Israel. If you curse them so that they will not have victory against me. And the rewards are quite a lot. You know, people say you'll do anything for money. Well, Balaam was considering that. And uh, he said, well, let me sleep on it. And he came back in the morning and he said, look, guys, there's no way. God has blessed Israel. There's no way that he's going to curse him. And so uh, he said, no, he, he wouldn't take the job. And the delegation went back and Balak sent a second delegation with, with much bigger rewards that increase the pay. Uh, what's the man's price? And still he said to them, no. And so after a bit of discussion, Balaam goes out and he saddles his donkey and uh, he goes off with the princes and with two servants. So there was a bit of an audience to this ordeal that would appear. And they're going along and the donkey sees the angel of the Lord 
with a drawn sword. Now the donkey saw it, but Balaam didn't. And so the donkey turned into a field, and Balaam gets off and he beats her. He beats her. It was a, it was a she-donkey, by the way. And I learned that the other day when I was discussing the story with my daughter-in-law, who is Spanish, and like many European languages, they have uh, gender attached to animate and inanimate objects. And uh, so, yes, it's a, a she-donkey, and he's, he, he beats this poor donkey. And uh, eventually he gets her going, and, and they, he gets back on, and they're traveling along, and he comes, they come to a narrow place where there's no room to turn. And instead of turning because the donkey couldn't, she did what women so often do. She dug in her heels and sat down. And she lay down with Balaam on her back. And he beat her again. And then the third time this thing happens, and in this time he, she goes close to the wall and she scrapes his foot on the stone. And for the third time he beats her. And he's been made a fool of, he's embarrassed. And a lot of people talk to inanimate things during lockdown. And of course, a donkey is not inanimate, it's an animal. But people talk to their kettles and their irons and their stoves and as they live on their own and they, they find this lockdown so trying. Uh, but it's as if it was lockdown. And so Balaam hears the donkey and the donkey says to him, Why have you beat me, beaten me this third time? And so the story goes on, and we find in, in, in uh, Numbers chapter 22 that um, Balaam's donkey replies, and suddenly Balaam sees the angel of the Lord. And uh, in verse 32 it says, The angel of the Lord asked him, Why have you beaten your donkey? Oh, not the donkey. The angel asked him, Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? I have come here to oppose you because your path is reckless. And the donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. And if she had not turned away, I would certainly have killed you, Balaam, by now. But I would have spared her. And so Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I did not realize you were standing in the road to oppose me. Now, if you are displeased, I will go back. And the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but speak only what I tell you. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. And when Balak heard that Balaam was coming, he went out to meet him at the Moabite town of Onan, at the, on the Onan border and at the edge of the territory. And Balak said to Balaam, Did I not send an urgent summons? Why did you not come to me? Am I really not able to reward you? And so the story goes on, and Balaam really wants to get the fee that has been offered to curse Israel. And he's looking for a way that he can get the fee and at the same time not disobey God. And that's really problematic for him. And so the story goes on, and he does not do, there are seven oracles, there are seven revelations, there are seven answers that he gives. And we find that, that as the story unfolds, there is no way that Balaam can disobey God and please Balak. And so we may concentrate on the talking donkey, but that's not the issue. You see, this is a story. And we could also be flippant. We could also be flippant and say, listen to a woman even if she's an ass. <laughs> and I would hate to say that. And if a woman sits down and digs in her heels, there's no budging her. And I would hate to say that. But it is a story of greed. He wanted more money. 
It was a story of compromise. A man of God, even though he was not a Jew, a man of God, and God spoke to him and he listened to God and he replied to God. And yet when he is made an offer by a pagan king, he wants to go. He wants to go. He wants to go and do what that king bids him. And God says to him, if you want to go, then go. And that's what we call the permissive will of God. There are times when, when God lets us do things that are not in his perfect will. And he releases Balaam to do that. And so Balaam feeds his greed. He's confronted by his compromise. He betrays. He betrays the God that he is taking advice from. He betrays the people of Israel because he has found out that there's sin in the Israeli camp. He's found out that some of those, those Israeli men are involved with the temple prostitutes of the Moabites. And he uses this and he manipulates the situation. He's involved in corruption. He's involved in corruption because he may even have been encouraging this immorality, hoping that Israel would fall and that he would be able to claim some sort of reward for having cursed Israel. It's the money that he's after. It's not obedience to God. It's looking at a way to curse Israel and to get paid. And so we look at that story and we say, is this not where we find ourselves so often? We're wanting to do things that we know God doesn't want us to do. And God is in his permissive will for us is saying, go ahead and do it. You will learn from your mistakes and you will come back to me. He says, then go. That is the permissive will of God. We have greed in our hearts that make us want to turn away from God's way. We compromise our faith. We compromise our witness. We betray those who are closest to us. We betray those with whom we have fellowship and those who support us. And our minds are filled with corruption of way, looking for ways of doing wrong and not being caught out and not being blamed. And so what is our take home from this? What do we what do we conclude from this? Well, I think we've got to conclude that, that when God tells us to do something, we need to obey. There's only one way we can go. We need to obey. But there's something else that we can we can take from this. You know, Balaam beat his donkey. I don't know how many of us own donkeys, but there are things that we, we beat. We beat on it all the time. We beat on it all the time because that's what we want to do. And sometimes we get advice and sometimes we say, who, who is that person? What is that channel through which the advice has come? And we think it's a donkey talking to us. <coughs> but we need to note that God does speak to us. He speaks to us through the conviction in our hearts. He speaks to us through the counsel of friends. He speaks to us through the reading of his word. He speaks to us through our thoughts when we meditate on him. And he speaks to us by conviction that comes in such a way that we know this is what God wants us to do. And I would encourage you to do that. Read the story of Balaam. Enjoy it and obey. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus, there are times when we try to manipulate you and bend your will to meet ours. And we know that we cannot do that. We remember that song that says, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. When we do his good will, he delights in us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And Lord, sometimes that trusting is difficult. Sometimes we trust in spite of our doubts and our fears and our uncertainty. We know there's no one else that we can talk to. 
no one else we can turn to, but only you. And it's so hard for us to obey, just to do the things that you want us to do. And so we don't do them, and then we sin. And we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would forgive us our sins. We ask, Lord, that when we do that, you would pick us up and, and restore us. We remember that John, in his letter, wrote and he said to a bunch of Christians, he said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so there's an expectancy that Christians need restoration from sin, that we will sin. And we thank you for that faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, that you do cleanse us from all unrighteousness when we fall. But we ask, Lord, in a special way today that you would grant that we will not fall, that you keep us from falling and present us faultless in the presence of your glory. And we trust you for that. So bless us as we serve you, we pray in your name. Amen. So go on the way, be careful of narrow places and donkeys, and do what God wants you to do. Jesus. 
在。